Hey, Number Crunchers, good to be back with you. And in today's lesson, I'd like to go over an evolution algorithm. Now, evolution is probably the central fact of life on Earth, and happens all the time. And we can use numerical processes that, that are reflective of what we know about evolution to help us optimize products and processes. And in this lesson, we're going to see how we can use something like evolution to uh, find the minimum of an objective function. Now, I want to be clear, there is an entire field of study called genetic algorithms, and they are much more sophisticated than what I'm going to show you. So although this uh, uh, algorithm I'm going to go over is inspired by evolution, it certainly doesn't rise to the level of the genetic algorithm. So if you want to use this as a stepping stone to get to genetic algorithms, that's probably a good idea. So here's basically what goes on. Um, we're going to take some objective function, and I'm going to draw a contour plot of it right here, and I'll make something that looks plausible. Okay, this might be contour plot of an objective function. Now, what does that objective function mean? I don't know, that's up to you. We're going to assume that objective function means something of value to us, that there's a reason we want to find the lowest spot here. This could be the, the um, uh, lowest combined distance to take a trip, or it could be lowest uh, fuel consumption for a delivery truck, or it could be lots of other things. But we're going to assume that we've got two variables, x and y, and they result in an objective function that looks like this. And the minimum of the objective function tells us something uh, useful, tells us something really valuable that we want to know. Now, to be able to draw the contour plot, you had to map design space. To draw this plot, you've got to calculate the objective function a bunch of times. Well, the whole point of optimization is to find a minimum without calculating the objective function a whole bunch of times. So there are many algorithms that will let you search through design space. But a simple one is to say, well, I don't know what the objective function looks like. If I knew what it looked like everywhere, I wouldn't have a problem. I've got to find this. and Rather than try to, to move through space in some search, uh, uh, search method, I'm going to just go ahead and draw points on here. I'm going to select maybe 10 or 20 minimum points. So I'll use a different color here. Multimedia, huh? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. Okay, there's 10 points. Let's make those big enough that you guys can see them. I don't know what kind of resolution you're working with here. So those circles are 10 random points in dope. There's one right there. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so I got all 10 of them. Those are 10 random points in design space. I'm going to go ahead and calculate the values of the objective function at all 10 of those. All right? Well, just by looking at the contour plots, this one right here looks like it's the lowest. All right? So that's my, new, my first estimate of the minimum. Well. See, I got one more color, I'll go to green. So now that I know that's the minimum, let's assume that maybe that's close to the actual minimum of the objective function. It's the minimum of my 10 points. Let's search again in random fashion, but now let's search in a region clustered around that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, those are too concentrated in one direction, 9, 10, there. Okay? By the way, Making up random numbers is really hard to do, so you're going to have to use a random number generator in something. So let me circle those so you can see where they are. Now I've made 10 more random points, but now I've clustered them around my current estimate of the minimum. Well, which one of those is the smallest? Well, that's going to be this one, I think. Okay. So now I'm closer to my, the true minimum of the function. And I did it with, in this case, would be 20 function evaluations. Now obviously, the more of these points you calculate, the, the, the more likely it is you're going to find a minimum. But the more of these points you calculate, the closer you get to just mapping the objective functions. The game we're playing is try to find that minimum while doing as few objective function calculations as possible. So. The next step would be now to cluster the, the, the next group of points around my new current estimate of the minimum. And I may want to do that by shrinking the range down a little bit. Um, I guess I've got black here. So this isn't going to show up too well, but I'll try it anyway. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, I missed one. Oh, ten. There it is. Okay, so there's ten. Well, between there and there, I, I can't really tell. Let's, let's maybe guess that one's our current estimate, our newest estimate of the minimum. Now I'm really close. So this is the idea of how this works. Okay, there's a very well-known story in the optimization world by a guy named Steve Jones about how to uh, uh, how they use an, uh, an evolution an evolution algorithm or an evolutionary approach to optimize the design of a nozzle that helped make soap powder. And it's a very, very good uh, example. It's probably one of the seminal examples of how this got going. It's certainly one of the most popular ones. So I encourage you to go look that up online. Uh, if I can find a link for you, I'll post it at the end of this video, okay? So with that in hand, let's go over to MATLAB and I'll show you how to do this numerically. All right, here we are in the familiar MATLAB window, and we're going to use the uh, optimization algorithm to find the minimum of an objective function. Well, to do that, we need an objective function. I'm going to use one called the butterfly function that's in the textbook for this class, Fundamentals of Optimization, Methods, Minimum Principles, and Applications for Making Things Better. I'm the author, Mark French, and it's published by Springer. The function we're looking at is on page 224. It's in Appendix B. So rather than have you watch me type this in again, I'll just recall the command. And I'm going to use the fContour function, which replaces the easy contour function. And there it is. Now to uh, make it so we can see everything all at once, let's, let's move things around a little bit. This way you'll be able to see the plot and my you know, the command window both at the same time. And uh, this is not square right now. If I turn on grid, you can see the grid the grid lines aren't square. Well, it would be nice if they were to avoid uh, distortion here. So I type in axis, square, hit return. Now, see that? I'm going from minus 5 to 5 in, in steps of 1. For some reason, it decided not to uh, do that on the x-axis. So let's fix that. I'll open up Plot Tools. And on the x-axis, OK, x scale, x limits, ticks. There we go. All right, I want to step by ones. Let's say apply. There we go. Close that. That looks better. Let's move this over here so we can, again, see both at the same time. There. OK, that's much better. Now we've got them even. We can see those those uh, boxes are all square on there. And you can see it kind of looks like a butterfly. You can see why we, we named it that, my students and I. So first thing I need to do is uh, figure out where the exact minimum is so we know what the target is. Well, the minimum is given in, in the book. It's minus uh, 1.296 in the x direction and 1.281 in the y direction. So I'm going to pull that up. There's the two points. That's x star and y star. I want to make a red plus sign. And I want it big, so I'm going to say marker size 10. Look at that. I messed it up. What happened? I didn't put hold on. So let's do this. Let's say F contour. There it is again. Turn the grid line on again. Grid's on. And it kept my square. That's nice. Now I have to say hold on. I'm about to add something extra to this plot. And there it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make 10 random x values and 10 random y values all between 0 and 5. So I'm going to say RAND 10, 1. Okay, that's going to make a matrix that's 10 rows and 1 column, which is a vector. Now the random command right there gives me numbers between 0 and 1, and they're evenly distributed, unless I tell it otherwise. Well, I want to uh, make it between plus 5 and minus 5. So my range is 10, and I'm going to subtract 5. And there we go. Those numbers all live between plus 5 and minus 5. Let's do the same thing in the y direction. Because I'm executing the RAND command again, I'm going to get different numbers. Let's do this. I'll pull this up again, x, y, and I'll put zeros wherever the, uh, 
those points are. So if I hit return, there, those are my random points, randomly chosen points. And I don't really know which one's the minimum. Might be that one, might be that one, not sure. Well, how do I find out? Well, let's see. If I say uh, f min comma i equals, oh, If I'm going to find the minimum value on that plot, I need a list of objective function values that correspond to the x's and y's I've, I've calculated. Now remember, I'm evaluating these at x and y. There's the values of x and y, so hit return. There's the corresponding values of the objective function. Now how do I find the minimum of them? Well, I can just go in by eyeball. I guess it's that one right there. But this only works for really short lists. There must be a better way to do this. Let's do this. OBJ min, comma I, capital I. There, what this does is it finds the minimum value in that list called OBJ. It assigns the minimum value to that number right there, or that variable name right there. But it also tells me that one, it tells me I, it tells me where it lives. Well, that's really good to know. And indeed, it is right there, and it's number 9 in the list. So that means x min is x sub capital I, and y min equals y sub cap whoops, capital I. Now, I can plot x min y min, and let's make that a uh, plus, but let's make it a blue plus so we can tell it's different than the other one that's up there. And there it is right there. I missed that one. That's actually the minimum. Okay, so there's my first estimate of the minimum. That is the lowest of the 10 points. Well, it worked once. Let's do it again, only now let's cluster my new guesses around what I already know is the minimum value. Okay, we're going to need a new list of random numbers now. Let's do the same thing we did before. We use 10. But now let's say we, want, we only want uh, a range of plus and minus 3. So uh, we'll start out by getting numbers between 0 and 6. We'll subtract 3 from it, so now they go plus minus 3. But I don't want them around, centered around 0. I want them centered around my new estimate of the minimum. There they are. So those are within uh, plus or minus 3 of my new minimum. Let's do the same thing for y and use that around y min. There's that. I'm going to need new minimums, uh, new, new values for the objective function. There's those. Let's go ahead and plot x and y and let's make those uh, blue perhaps. Okay, and so I'll have blue circles for all my new points. There they are. Now, some, some of those were outside my original range and so it re-scaled re, uh, the plot to account for them, but it didn't recalculate. Well, for right now, let's just leave it like it is. If we really wanted to, we could recalculate. Let's do the uh, same command we did before. Now I know my minimum value is uh, lies at, at uh, element 8, so right there. My new one's going to be, let's see, 3 is the y value and minus uh, 0.61 for the x value. Let's pull that up there, y there. And we already have obj min, so let's put another plus. right there. Make it another blue, blue plus is good. And see now my new value is right there. So I've just gotten closer to the minimum, the true minimum. Now just to fix this, now that I don't need those extra points, let's correct that and make that uh, go back to plus and minus 5. And X. And let's make it plus or minus whoa, 5 in Y as well. So 
we've got that. Close that. And there we are again. So we've got some points that are not on the plot, but you can see right now that I've, there was my first estimate. There's my second estimate. I can do a third estimate if I want to. I can just keep uh, going uh, through these iterations until I get closer and closer. So I've calculated the objective function 20 times, and I found a pretty good answer. So it's worked well. So there is the uh, evolutionary minimization algorithm applied to the butterfly function. Hope this works for you. We'll talk to you next time.